The following is transcribed. Welcome to Bat Soup, the never nutritious, definitely delicious podcast dedicated to the old time radio adventures of Superman and the dynamic duo. Buckle your utility belts for lots of desperate waiting, plenty of cold plunging, and treading water galore. Before we get to today's adventure, let's pause for this important message. Gang, we uh all make mistakes. Sure. Why, sometimes we leave the milk out on the kitchen counter after breakfast. Or maybe we forget to put the gas cap back on the car after we pump it full of fuel. And sometimes we just underestimate the ingenuity of... Well, anyway, uh, the, the point is... We all make mistakes, right, Officer O'Flanagan? Sure and big order we do, and it's always important to own up to your mistakes. Isn't that right, Billy? Well, yeah... Well, go ahead, tell him what you did. Well, see, we got all excited about the new swell prize, you know, the tailpipe sections of the Batmobile. But it turns out they were kind of boring, so I had this idea and... Me and my friends took a bunch to the high school machine shop and threaded the ends to make a bunch of longer bits of pipe. And and then my friend from the juvenile parole program, Matches Johnson... Uh, Matches? He's in a wee bit of trouble for pyromania. Oh. Anyway, Matches and a bunch of us thought it'd be fun to, well, you know, see if we could make our pipes into little cannons. So we had the idea to get our hands on some little cannonballs. So we volunteered to pick up golf balls at the local country club because they're the perfect size, you know, to go on. Well, we had a bunch of that powder we synthesized from the shell casings prize just laying around, and then we picked a target. But I swear, Officer O'Flanagan, we really thought the Johansson house was abandoned. Lucky for you, Lot, he's not pressing charges. Truth to be told, I think he was pretty impressed. Neat! But that doesn't mean you're off the hook with me! So, uh, there you go, gang. When you own your mistakes, you're less likely to make them again. And boy, oh boy, do we have some big changes coming here at Bat Soup. Uh, but we'll have more on that next time. Uh, meanwhile, keep asking Mom to keep plenty of never-nutritious, definitely delicious Bat Soup in your pantry for lunch or dinner. Uh, bat Soup, available wherever fine podcasts are sold. All's well that ends. Well... And now, Bat Soup presents today's adventure, part 14 of The Dead Voice, as originally broadcast on October 15th, 1946. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive... Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P E P Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the Sunshine Cereal, presents the Adventures of Superman. Today, as Batman, Robin, and Grandpa Grayson helplessly cling to each other in an open sea, Superman zooms back to Metropolis with the only clue to his friend's whereabouts, the seriously wounded and unconscious Alfred. Hello there, gang. This is your pal, Dan McCullough. Say, I'll bet now's the time when you fellas and girls are up to your ears in school games and athletics. And that means you're using up energy at a mighty fast clip. So eating a good breakfast is all the more important these days. And that's where Kellogg's Pep comes in. Sure, because Pep is such a slick dish. So crisp and and catchy tasting and full flavored that, well, it tickles your appetite so you'll want to eat. Yes, sir, breakfast sure gets the glad eye when Kellogg's Pep heads the menu. And will you give those swell Pep prizes the glad eye? Prizes that are always surprises because you never know which one of the three different kinds of prizes you'll find when you open your Pep package. For instance, you'll get either a colored cardboard model of a a famous fighting plane, one of seven in the great Pep Air Fleet. Or uh, you'll get one of 24 beautiful color pictures of birds with a full description on the reverse side. 
or else you'll find a bright-colored comic button picturing one of 18 characters straight from the funnies. Collect all 18 to, to pin on your jacket or your beanie cap. Just ask Mom to get Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, tomorrow and look for your prize inside the package. And now, the adventures of Superman. Scheming to obtain the large fortune of Mr. Grayson, Robin's grandfather, Paul Marsh, Grayson's secretary, conspired with the captain of his employer's yacht, on which Robin, his grandfather, and Batman were trapped far out at sea. After setting the yacht on fire, Marsh and the crew abandoned it in a launch leaving our friends to their fate. Searching for them, meanwhile, Superman sighted the crippled Batboat in which Alfred, Batman, and Robin's loyal butler had been trying to reach Metropolis after being shot. Superman carried the wounded man to a Coast Guard base. And as we continue now, once more in his guise of Clark Kent, he is speaking to Commander Schuyler, the Coast Guard medical officer. Listen. Tell me, Commander, will Alfred pull through? I'm quite sure he will, Mr. Kent. Fortunately, the bullet didn't puncture any vital organs. Oh, that's fine. May I speak to him now? I'm afraid not. We've just operated to remove the bullet. He's still under the anesthetic, you know. Oh, of course. Well, when will he come out of it, do you know? Oh, in about half an hour. Well, may I talk with him then? Well, he's also suffering from exposure and shock. It would be better if he rested quietly until morning. Well, look, but... Commander, I-, I don't want to do anything that might interfere with Alfred's recovery, but only he can tell me where Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson are. I know they're in danger, great danger, judging by what happened to Alfred. Yes. Every minute might mean the difference between life or death to them. I see. Well, in that case, I think I might consent to your questioning him when he recovers consciousness. Good. You say he'll come to in about half an hour? About that. Well, then if you don't mind, I'll wait right here. Uh, Will you call me as soon as I can see him? I'll send for you. Thanks. Thanks very much. As Kent waits anxiously for Alfred to recover consciousness... Batman, Robin, and Mr. Grayson have been forced by the fire to leap from the flaming yacht into the sea. Supporting the old man between them, Batman and Robin tread water and watch as the yacht, a brilliant area of angry red flame in the dark night, suddenly tilts her bow high into the air. Then, with a loud hiss of steam, glides swiftly below the black waves to her final resting place at the bottom of the sea. Then, when the yacht is gone... There is only the faint, pale radiance of the stars over the three tiny human figures awash in the vast, heaving ocean. This water's cold, Batman. Well, what did you expect? A hot bubble bath? No, but I sure wish I'd thought of putting on my fur-lined swimming suit. Ah, ridiculous. Cold water stimulates the circulation. How are you doing, Mr. Grayson? Oh, I, I don't like to complain when, when you two are so brave, but I, I'm pretty weak. I don't think I can... And much more. Oh, oh, look, that's no way to talk, Grandpa. Think how good you'll feel when you get into a warm bed and serve up a nice juicy steak and hot oh, chocolate. You'd better not promise steak, Dick. There's a meat shortage on, you know. Oh, gee, I forgot. Will you settle for fish, uh, Grandpa? I, I say, it, it's frightfully cold, and I... Oh, I... Oh. Grandpa. Grandpa. Rub his arms, Dick. Come on, Mr. Grayson. Try to kick your legs. Come on. I can't. I, it, it, it's no use. I, I'm done for. Oh, don't talk like that. Gee, Brazier, I've just found you. <laughs> you can't leave me now. I was figuring on your visiting us in Metropolis, and, and then maybe Batman and I would visit you in England. Well, and... I was hoping to, to, to spend my last few years with you, Dick, but... I... Oh, golly, you've got to try to... <laughs> oh, thanks to Paul Marsh, it wasn't paid to be. God, God bless you, boy. Hey. Oh, hey. I'm Grandpa. Batman. He's unkind to stick. Well, maybe it's better this way. Oh, that dirty rat Marsh. If only I could get my hands on him. It looks like he holds all the cards this time, chum. I guess so. Oh, he'll inherit all the grace and money and have himself a time. Well, Grandpa and you and, <laughs> you and I and poor Alfred. Oh, no. Easy, fella. Oh, Easy. that makes my blood boil. If only there was something we could do. <laughs> something well, that... short of swimming a couple of hundred miles to Metropolis... I can't think of anything. I'm afraid that we're just going to... Batman. What's the matter, Dick? I'm getting kind of numb. Keep moving your arms and legs. Uh, Look, I'll hold on to Mr. Grayson alone. You let go, son. Go ahead. All right. But what's the use? We can't hold out much longer. We've got to hold out. Clark Kent knows we're in trouble. Chances are he's looking for us now. I hope. Uh, so do I. Why, even if Mr. Kent was Superman... That's he... what I mean. Why? Well, I... I mean, Clark Kent has been able to contact Superman on occasion, you know, and... Well, even well, if he it... did contact him, Superman doesn't know where we are. So what good would it do? Well, 
Too much, I suppose. I was counting on Alfred getting back to Metropolis from the fat boat and telling Kent where we were. But when Marsh's gang shot Alf, well, they knocked that little idea on the head. Oh, poor Alfred. He was a swell little guy. Yeah. Yeah, he sure was. Oh, and my grandpa. He's a pretty nice old boy, too. You're right again, son. And... Now, look. Uh, Don't you go slopping over on me, son. I'm not. Oh, gee. My hands and feet are like ice. Keep moving them like I said. Look. <coughs> look, I'll, I'll tell you what. Let's kill time with a game of 20 questions. Okay? I'm thinking of an object. Okay. So am I. A bowl of hot soup. I'll cut that out. Let's stay with 20 questions. I'm thinking of an object. Okay. Animal or mineral? Mineral. <laughs> mineral, huh? Uh-huh. And on the men- don't make it too tough. Between you and me and that big wave, I don't think I can last another hour. Will you cut out that kind of talk? <laughs> I repeat, I'm thinking of an object. All right. It's mineral, huh? Right. Well, that leaves me 19 questions. Mineral. I'm right here, Alfred. Mr. Kent. As soon as he came out of the evening, he began asking for you, Kent. Uh-huh. Clark Kent. Get him at Metropolis Daily Planet. Here I am, Alfred. Clark. Right here by your bed. You. Oh, I say, you are Mr. Kent, aren't you? Yes, I am. Make it as brief as possible. Oh. Right, Commander. Tell me, Alfred, what happened to, ba- uh, to, to Bruce Wayne and to Dick Grayson? Where are they? Oh, on the... on the yacht, sir. The yacht? What yacht? Black yacht. Two... two. A black yacht? Uh, yes, sir. With two orange smokestacks. Right, where is this yacht? South past the Narrows. South and past the Narrows? Five points east, southeast. Yes. Sir. Then, straight out to sea. Right, good boy, Alfred. Oh, sir, they're in great danger. You, you must help them at once. I'll do what I can. You get well. So long. Hurrying from the Coast Guard Infirmary, Clark Kent pauses on the dark beach and strips off his business suit, revealing the blue costume and red cape of Superman. Then, up, up, and away! Leaping high into the dark sky, the Man of Steel streaks away over the ocean to search for the black yacht with two orange smokestacks. The yacht, which, although he doesn't know it, is now at the bottom of the sea. What will happen? We'll know in a moment when we return for the tense climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, have you noticed, gang, how fellows and girls who eat Kellogg's Pep are like a regular pep cheering section? Sure, at the drop of a hat, they'll go into detail and tell you how crisp and golden toasted pep is. Or uh, maybe they'll tell how keen and catchy these flakes of whole wheat taste. Why, you've probably said that yourself. And say, I'd sure like to be around when you tell somebody new in the gang about those swell prizes you find in packages of pep. I've got an idea you'll say, Jeebers, are those pep prizes slick? Of course, uh... You'll tell about the three different kinds of prizes and how it's always a grand surprise to find out which one of the three you'll get in your next pet package. How it could be a model fighting plane in colored cardboard, one of seven great pet planes you can collect. Or it could be one of 24 new full-color bird pictures with a description on the reverse side so that you can identify these birds in the air. Or it could be one of 18 bright-colored comic buttons picturing a famous comic strip character. Swell for, for pinning on your jacket or your beanie cap. And say, while you're telling about those three kinds of pep prizes, don't forget to ask Mom to bring home a supply of Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal for you. Far out over the dark, heaving ocean, Superman rockets through the skies, searching for Mr. Grayson's yacht on which he hopes to find his friends, Batman and Robin. Black yacht with two orange smokestacks, Alfred said. No sign of it yet. Not much moon tonight, so my visibility is slightly limited. But if the yacht held on our course, I'll catch up with it yet. Away! Uh, still no sign of it. I must... Wait a minute, what's that ahead? 
over there are islands. Great Scott, those are the Azores. I've come too far. Back again. That yacht stayed on the course Alfred gave me. I don't see how I could have missed her. I'll follow it once again. But if she took another course, heaven knows how or when I'll find her on this huge ocean. I... Wait. Down there in the water. Looks like... Yes, it is. A man. Two men. Great Scott, one of them's Batman. Down to him. Go! Oh, great Superman. Superman. Yes. Yeah. Fine time and place too big for a bath, Batman. Here, I'll take... Hey, wait, who's this? It, it's Robin's grandfather. His grandfather? Yes. Listen, Superman, I... Well, I don't get I... it, but you can tell me about it later. Where's Robin? I don't know. What? A wave. Tremendous tidal wave swept him away from me a few minutes ago. Uh-oh. I couldn't let go of Mr. Drayton and go after him. So I've, I've been paddling around calling him. But I can't find him. I'm afraid that... Right, take it easy, Batman. Take it easy. Can you keep going a little while longer? Yes. But Robin... I'll find, I'll find him. I hope. Up and away! <laughs> Leaping up from the dark waves, Superman begins ranging in ever-widening circles above the dark, sullen waves, searching for young Robin. What has happened to Batman's gallant young companion? Will Superman find Robin before he is claimed as another victim of the sea? We're approaching the smashing climax of our story, fellows and girls, so don't miss tomorrow's exciting episode when we encounter a startling surprise. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at this same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Think of the wonderful toasty things that taste good on a frosty morning and you think of something crisp, crunchy, crinkly. Crumbles. Why, there's that name again. Slips in every time. Crumbles. Kellogg's Crumbles. Just seems to go with words like crisp and crunchy. It's, it's such a toasty kind of cereal. Sort of sweet and metal rich. And you know, it's the only cereal in the whole wide world in those little crinkly shreds of good whole wheat. So when you think of good tasting words like crisp... Crunchy? Crinkly? That means crumbles for breakfast. Kellogg's Crumbles. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. That was part 14 of The Dead Voice from The Adventures of Superman. Thank you for listening. Never miss an episode of Bat Soup by subscribing on your favorite podcatcher. Be a pal and encourage your friends to subscribe as well. Bat Soup, a proud member of the Moonlight Audio Theater family of podcasts, is also available on YouTube and Facebook. Learn more at bat-supe.podbean.com. That'll wrap things up for this episode of Bat Soup, but be sure to tune in next time when you'll hear Clark Kent say... Well, I'm going down to the lobby cafe for some breakfast. For almost two centuries, Americans have enjoyed the valuable privileges of freedom. Now, freedom needs each American to dedicate himself to its preservation. We must not allow our liberties to be endangered by neglect of our duties as citizens. During this year of rededication, join with your fellow Americans in reaffirming the principles on which this country is founded and the safeguarding of those principles. Make it your business to see that federal, state, and local governments are conducted honestly. Help to maintain the good morale of your sons and daughters in the armed forces. Learn the facts about all candidates and issues. Then, vote for the one you believe in. Make the most of every minute on your job. Produce as much as you can, and thus increase our military and economic strength. Work for better schools and a better community. Guard your American heritage of freedom. It needs you.